Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and let's pick it up on our misdiagnosis with pancreatic tumors. And I think we do better than ever with pancreatic lesions these days, particularly with dual phase imaging, but still, without the right protocol, it's very easy to miss pancreatic adenocarcinoma when it's small. You're surely gonna miss neuroendocrine tumors, and you're gonna make mistakes in diagnoses. And I'm gonna show you some of the mistakes and things to think about. Now, it's interesting how much better we've gotten. In the old days, we were about 30 to 40% accurate for neuroendocrine tumors. Now we're about 95% accurate, and we pick up neuroendocrine tumors when they're five millimeters, when they're not even clinically suspected, and become incidental findings. Now, that's because we do lots of arterial phase imaging. Now, surgeons will operate in these small lesions because they are proving to be malignant, though patients will take a while for those tumors to spread. But timing is everything. If I show you this case and I say there's a mass in the pancreas present, you don't see one. No dilated common duct, no dilated pancreatic duct, and I'll even put a circle around the lesion. You still don't see it. But these were venous phase imaging in 60 seconds. What if I give you arterial phase imaging? Look what I got now. A three centimeter mass in the head of the pancreas. Classic neuroendocrine tumor. Oh my God, you missed that lesion. You missed it. Look how easy it is to see on the CTA. You missed it. And here it is side by side. Arterial phase and venous phase. Venous phase looks good. You would never question it. How could I miss a lesion that big? And Well, you will. If you don't do arterial phase imaging, you will miss neuroendocrine tumors. And it's not just neuroendocrine tumors, it's any vascular tumor. Here's a routine evaluation follow-up patient with left nephrectomy. Things look good. Tail of the pancreas falls posteriorly toward the renal bed. Classic. Spleen rotates. Classic. Well, look what happens when you looked at the arterial phase. You would have missed this 3.5 centimeter vascular metastasis to the pancreas from the kidney, the only site of metastasis. It's so obvious on the arterial phase, unreadable on the venous phase. It does make the point if you're doing renal cell carcinoma, the right protocol is arterial phase imaging and then venous phase. You'll miss lesions in the liver, in the pancreas, in the contralateral kidney unless you do arterial phase imaging, as well as missing lesions in a muscle. Now, sometimes you can get fooled the other way. This patient was referred to us for a neuroendocrine tumor in the tail of the pancreas. We were doing preoperative planning, and it looks like a neuroendocrine tumor when you look quickly. It has some faint calcification, perhaps. So do neuroendocrine tumors. When I did the 3D mapping, look what I saw. There wasn't a neuroendocrine tumor. There was a splenic artery aneurysm with partially calcification. So this patient did not need a distal pancreatectomy and splenectomy. We were not dealing with a cancer. We were dealing with a splenic artery aneurysm, which you can see right here with the calcification. Again, the chance of mistakes is very high. We also, and I'm not showing you this now, I'll save it for another lecture, talk about things in the peripancreatic region, whether it's a tumor of the duodenum, like a gist tumor that simulates a pancreatic mass and isn't, or it's lesions in the peripancreatic zone like nodes, so it's very important to look carefully, and coronals and 3Ds are critical in that regard. Let's look briefly at the kidneys now for pitfalls. The kidneys are truly one of the most common sources of pitfalls and something I'm always personally concerned about on a daily basis. Now, we talk about misdiagnoses, and um, Jonathan Berlin made that same point about missing diagnoses. And in the kidney, technique was one of the key reasons. Now, the issue gets somewhat magnified because we're trying to be careful with radiation dose and we're trying to minimize phases. But when you look at the pitfalls and pratfalls, the things you notice, the wrong phase of acquisition or not enough phases, the image display and the rendering all become very critical. So if I talk about the phase of data, it's important to recognize that there is no one phase that's perfect for every lesion. There's not one phase where every lesion is perfectly seen. So for example, non-contrast scans are great for renal calculi. With, but the, where they're really helpful at times is looking at how a lesion looks to begin before you give contrast. And so without non-contrast, you will miss often high-density renal cysts in the sense that you'll see them, but you'll call them a tumor. You won't recognize them for what they are. So if I show you this case, it looks like a left renal mass, maybe faint calcification. The mass looks solid, looks like a carcinoma on early phase imaging. And there it is, excretory phase imaging looks like a tumor as well. 
What bothered me in this case was the lesion measured about 80 Hounsfield units on the arterial and on the delayed. Now, I don't care what tumor you have, papillary or clear cell, whatever, tumors don't measure the same on two phases, three or four minutes or five minutes apart. It's always going to be different. When I see something that doesn't change in density across phases, I got to think it's a high-density renal cyst. Go back and do the non-contrast scans, and there it is, high-density renal cyst, a leave-alone lesion. So again, you could make mistakes because there is no perfect phase. Now, I also do make the point about non-contrast CTs as a source of error, that non-contrast CT stone protocols can exclude stone disease 99% plus accurate. But if you don't do contrast studies, there's so much you're going to miss. And I like to make the point is stone protocols are a good study when you're looking for stone. But if you're looking for more than that, it's not a good study. Remember what stone studies can say or show and what they cannot say or show. So non-contrast studies are going to miss small renal tumors, especially when they don't distort renal contour. And you can miss acute polynephritis, and you can miss vascular pathology. An example, perfectly normal kidney patient with hematuria. But, you know, when you have hematuria, particularly macroscopic, 30 to 40% chance of a tumor. You've got to be more careful. You can't just assume there's nothing there. And here it is. Look at the visualization. Very nicely shown. Solid mass. There's delayed phase imaging. And here they are all together. If you did not have the um, delayed phase or arterial phase imaging, you would have missed the lesion. So again, non-contrast CT will miss commonly solid renal tumors that don't distort the outline. Again, no one phase is perfect. And so I showed you how the other phase showed you nicely the lesion in arterial phase. But what about this case? Do you see the renal cancer that's here? You're looking right at it. Do you see, see it? You're looking right at it. Maybe, maybe I'll put a circle there. That may help, but I don't know. Is that normal cortex? Here's again. Is that normal? It kind of looks normal to me. There's something funny about it on the coronal view, but it's only on the excretory views. Now look how obvious that lesion is comparing the excretory to arterial phase. There's a one and a half to two centimeter lesion present that washes out nicely. That's seen in later phase imaging. That was a papillary renal cell carcinoma. But look how easy it was to miss that patient's lesion. And look how obvious it is when you're looking at these images. Now, another thing that's very important is the technique of display. you got to look beyond the axial images. If the axial images look normal, you need to still look at the coronals. Here's an example. They were read as normal. Now, it's easy to read this as normal. We were looking for abdominal pain, nothing else. But look about 3 o'clock. Well, if you want to look at it, look at the coronals. Look how obvious that renal mass is that the person overlooked on the axial imaging. Sometimes things just don't show well in the axial plane. Same thing here. This was read as normal. This is the upper pole of the right kidney. When you did the reconstructions, it's the upper pole, but it's an upper pole tumor. You would have missed it. Things in the upper pole or lower pole are very easy to miss because they get partial averaged out, and you don't appreciate them. So again, you must look at the coronals. We also recognize when you're looking at the ureters or pelvis of the kidney, you need wide windows. Here, when I widen the window and I remove the bone to do a CT urogram, it looks like a small lucency in the left ureter. And sure enough, when I go on a plane through the ureter, there it is. There's an obvious tumor. But look how subtle it is. We think about your readable tumors and say it must be obstructive. No, it doesn't. These small tumors, and this is not all that small on the coronal, often do not obstruct. And here it is again. Look at that lesion. Very clearly seen. It's not obstructing, but that was a transitional cell carcinoma. Here it is again. Now, there's lots of findings in looking at the ureter. We talk about signs of malignancy as thickening, increased enhancement, calcifications, periuretal fat stranding, filling defects or mass, or hydronephrosis or hydroureter. Uh, it's very important in looking at the ureters that the proper technique is used. Good article by Shiva Rahman. You can see here very nicely talking about your ureteral tumors may be extremely subtle and difficult to appreciate, particularly when relying on the patient's axial source image. He mentions it's critical go beyond the axials using 3D. 
particularly uh, MIP, but also um, volume rendered images, also coronal imaging. Uh, when you do all of those, you're going to not miss those lesions. 3D helps accentuate subtle strictures and sites of narrowing. It helps accentuate subtle abnormal enhancement. You get better visualization of the distal ureter and better visualization of what might be flat polypoid lesions. An example, there's right hydronephrosis and the ureter looks thickened and you follow it down, but it's the coronal view which gives you that uh, very nice uh, meniscus sign. This is the goblet sign to be exact. That's a transitional cell carcinoma, very nicely seen. Or in this case, left renal pelvis is a bit full. There's some delayed function of the left kidney in general. And you look and you say, okay, I don't see much. The ureter, there it is, doesn't look too bad. But if you look hard, it looks a bit thickened. When you look at the 3D, maybe there's just a UPJ. You know, it could be. Here's some more images. It's not well distended. Maybe it's just the UPJ. But when you look at that area more carefully on the soft tissue images, now you can see this infiltration of the proximal ureter. This was a transitional cell carcinoma. Very subtle. It was causing the UPJ here. We looked very carefully. But you can see how easy it is to miss something. Or in this example, look at the patient's renal pelvis. Looks okay. I don't see hydronephrosis. And you look quick at the ureters. They look okay. They're not dilated. And this is the point again. A dilated ureter is not necessary. Look at the left ureter. A few more images. You target around it. Look at the irregularity and small ulceration. This was a transitional cell carcinoma. Or this case, another example. You're looking at the left ureter. You look at you coming down and you say, well, there's a left ureter. When I create a perfect view, you can see a crescent and a donut, nicely seen there. And look how subtle it is. When I do the reconstructions, look at that carcinoma. Now you would say, geez, it's a one centimeter carcinoma. There's no obstruction. There should be obstruction. Well, the answer is there often is not obstruction, and you would have missed this lesion early when the lesion is curable. Patient had a left nephrectomy, a redirectomy, and partial resection of the bladder. But you would pick up the patient's tumor. Very, very nice example showing you that lesion. And then here it is on the 3D display. So when you look at the ureters or pelvis, technique is everything. You need to have delays, about five minutes. You need good opacification. Patients need to be hydrated so that the urine is excreted rapidly, opacifying the ureters and the bladder. But again, 3D mapping becomes very, very critical. And that's a very important part of what we do. What else? Mesenteric vessels. Mesenteric vessels are a source of problems and continue to be. Very easy to mislead yourself in assuming things are normal unless you look carefully, particularly with the celiac and SMA. So I'll tell you what we'll do is, I think I have one more set of images or slides, a fourth component for this talk. Let's do that, and we'll start that in about five minutes. Thanks a lot.